Have you ever wondered what the signs are of a narcissist smear campaign? Well, by the end of this video, you're going to know what the signs are that they've started to engage in a full on smear campaign. Hi, I'm Rebecca Zung, top 1% attorney and the best selling author of the books Negotiate Like You Matter and Breaking Free A Step by Step Divorce Guide. And I've helped thousands of people go from lives of drama, trauma, and chaos all the way to lives of freedom, possibility, and purpose. And I do the same thing for you right here in these videos. So make sure that you've hit subscribe and you've hit that notification bell. And that way you'll get notified when I upload brand new content. So let's talk about a narcissist and the narcissist smear campaign. You can't have a narcissist without a smear campaign, especially in the discard phase of a relationship. Remember, the narcissistic relationship starts with love bombing, then it goes into devaluing, and then we have the discard phase. And if you want to know more about the three phases of a narcissistic relationship, make sure you check out my videos on love bombing, devaluing, and discarding so that you can learn more about that. And remember that even though it starts with love bombing and ends with discarding, they, they can be love bombing as they're discarding and love bombing as they're devaluing. And, you know, it's kind of this toxic stew in between, as one of my um, followers had said one time. So it's so true. But in the discard phase of a relationship, that's when you really see the birth of the smear campaign. Because when you're dealing with a narcissist, you're either for them or you're against them. And you can't be, you know, even when you're for them, they don't always believe that you're for them. And they're, they're, they're t constantly testing you to see if you're for them. Are you, are, you know, constantly testing. And if you want to know more about how narcissists test their victims, make sure you check out my video on how narcissists test victims, because they're, they're testing you from the minute you are brushed up against each other. They're testing you, but in the discard phase of the relationship, when you're kind of coming toward the end, whether it's you are the one who's discarding or the narcissist is the one that's discarding, you're going to see this birth of the smear campaign because the narcissist wants to get out in, in front of this. They want to be the one that comes out looking good and you are the one that looks bad. So they're going to do whatever they can to make you look bad. As a divorce attorney, I see the smear campaign happening all the time. And so what, one, what's one of the signs of a smear campaign? You start seeing like that they're emailing people or, or texting people or telling people that there's something wrong with you that, you know, in a divorce setting, they may start the seeds of their smear campaign long before the divorce is actually filed. So for example, um, they might say something like, oh, I'm really um, concerned about my husband or my wife because, you know, he or she had too much to drink last night. And I'm just really worried, you know, that, that maybe he or she is depressed. And, and they, they, they couch it in this like concern while they're actually stabbing you in the back. And so what they do then is several months later when the divorce is actually filed or, or going, then they can go, oh, so-and-so is an alcoholic. Well, I told you that, you know, I've been seeing signs of this for a long time. Um, and so that's kind of part of the smear campaign. You start to see these little seeds being planted um, through what they're saying, through what they're texting, what they're um, what they're emailing to people. Um, and, 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 you know, you might even see it on their social media and that sort of thing. So they're, they're much more covert usually about it before the divorce is actually started or before the real discard is in full play. And once the discard is in full play, that's when, um, and out in the open, because you've either broken up or, 
Um, you've, you've revealed to them that you no longer want to be in a relationship with them, whether it's in a business relationship or a divorce relationship, or they've revealed to you that they no longer want to be in a relationship. Now they have to turn you into the enemy because they want to get out in front of it. They want to make sure that everybody knows that it was your fault that something happened with the relationship. It was because you were a cheater, because you didn't meet their needs, because um, you're a liar, because you're the narcissist. They might even tell people that you're the narcissist um, because you didn't uh, do what you were supposed to do or that you were abusive or whatever, fill in the blank. But they want to make sure that the world sees that they are the good ones and that you are the bad ones. So what are some other signs of smear campaigns? Flying monkeys. They start lining up their flying monkeys. And remember that flying monkeys are the, it's another word for triangulation. They're basically getting people lined up to be on their side and, and, and see how wonderful they are and, and how awful you are. And, and, and that way they can say things to you like, oh, um, everybody else knows how wonderful I am. Everybody else thinks I'm a fantastic mother or a, a, a amazing father. You're the only one who thinks fill in the blank. So it's a way of isolating you, a way of controlling you, and a way of making you feel degraded, devalued, and um, that no one else will ever understand what you've been dealing with because everyone else thinks this person is amazing. And they, they line up flying monkeys in all different forms. I mean, it can be people that um, that you were both friends with. It can be, um, if it's a business setting, it might be clients, it might be other people in your field. It may even be members of your family. It may be neighbors. It may be anybody who they feel that they can use against you to hurt you so that you feel like everybody else thinks that this person is wonderful, even though you know the truth about this person, no one's going to believe you because everyone else thinks that they're incredible. So flying monkeys is a, a very, very integral part of the, the narcissist smear campaign. Another way that narcissists use the smear campaign, another sign of a smear campaign is being left out of things, things that you might have typically been included in, things that you might have typically in, been invited to. And so you're left over here feeling isolated again, like, you know, look at how they're winning and, 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 and going on with their life and continuing to have a fantastic time while you're left over here out in the cold being isolated. And obviously you've made a huge mistake in not continuing to give this narcissist the endless amount of supply that you were supposed to give this narcissist. So, you know, you're going to be punished for not continuing to do whatever it was that the narcissist thought that you should do. Which by the way, even when you were doing all of those things, it still wasn't good enough. So it really was a black hole to begin with and it continues to be a black hole. You will see that that's the kind of thing that they do. That's one of the signs of a smear campaign. And if you've seen or been the victim of a narcissist and their flying monkeys, give me a, this stops now in the comments. Another sign of a smear campaign is having their minions, their flying monkeys, like check up on you and check up on what you're doing. So they might say, oh, are you doing okay? So-and-so wanted to know if you're doing okay. Or maybe they just have them spy on you by having one of your neighbors or friends or family members tell them what you were up to, or maybe spying on you by looking at your social media accounts to see what you've been doing. Oh, I see that you took the kids to some place or something like that, or I understand that you fed the kids, you know, candy for dinner. 
uh, so, so-and-so uh, saw that or something like that. So they have their flying monkeys in various places. They're little spies who are either allegedly checking up on you or the, just straight out spying on you. And the last sign of a smear campaign is what we see in the court system all the time, and that is that they file things within the court system about you that aren't true. So they will ask for sole custody, or they will say that you are an unfit parent, or they will say that you are a wife beater, or that you are an abuser, or that you are an alcoholic, or that you're a drug addict, and you know, whatever it is that they need to say to gain some kind of advantage over you within the court system. And that's one of the biggies that, you know, a signs of a smear campaign within the court system, uh, definitely a sign of narcissists at work. If you are dealing with a narcissist and you're getting ready to negotiate with a narcissist, make sure to grab my free Crush My Negotiation prep worksheet. Don't go into a mediation or, or any kind of a dispute, dispute resolution conference without it. You can get it at the link below or winmynegotiation.com and it's all yours for free. If you like this video, give it a like, give it a share, drop me a comment, let me know that you were here. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe, hit that notification bell. And if you are dealing with a narcissist and you want more support, come on over and join me in my free private Facebook group. It's called Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. And we'll make sure to drop a link to that below as well. I'm so glad that you were here and that you stopped by my channel. Remember, today's a great day to start negotiating your best life. I'll see you in the next video.